All right, guys, welcome to another SolidWorks tutorial. Today we will be working on uh, an advanced technique um, that is pretty common today in product designing, uh, which is called surface modeling. Um, you may or may not have already tried it uh, with your models before, but I'm going to show you a couple techniques on how to add texture to a model while using surfacing. So you'll see here, uh, this is the end product of what we'll be working on. This is uh, salt and pepper grinders. Um, they were originally designed by uh, industrial designer Kobe Trout. I'll have a link to his Instagram page in the description. All right, let's go ahead and start a new document. Um, we're going to be doing a part file. All right. Okay, so we're going to be first drawing an outline of the sketch on our front plane. Now I've already gone ahead and modeled this, so I, I know what dimensions I want to be using um, based off of some other salt and paper grinders that I've seen, um, as well as I, I loaded up an image of the uh, rendering that he made as a background. But I'll, I've already gone into how to add a sketch picture uh, in previous tutorials. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, use the dimensions that I've already created and just follow along with me. So in our sketch, we're going to draw our center line. And I actually want my origin to be at the center of um, where the texture is going to be. So let's add a relation from the origin to this line and give it a midpoint relation. And this part of the model, I'm going to make 89 millimeters. Now, if you are not in millimeters and you can find that out by looking at the lower right hand corner, you can change that at any time. Uh, but if you are in a sketch, it will take you out of the sketch. So make sure if you do have to change this, you go back and edit the sketch that you're in. All right. So we're going to add another line that's going to be 16 millimeters. And then another one and one more. This is basically just differentiating um, from different parts of the model. So this line is for where the texture is going to be. This, this line here is at the top of the model where, um, if I flip back, this, that's this part here where there's no texture. And then we have the ring that, you know, that has a different material. Uh, that's a divider ring. And then we have our... Um, you know, the base of the model. Okay. So I want to make this eight millimeters and this one's going to be 52 millimeters. Okay. Now we can start creating our profile for the revolve that we're going to be doing. So I'm going to come out here, and you know what? I'm just going to move these over to the other side. For some reason, I, I just like to create my revolves, the sketch on the left side. <laughs> but, uh, you know, to each their own. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, so this is going to be, well, my diameter is 46, but since I'm only doing a radius, I'm going to do, divide that by 2. And if you don't know that, you can, you can put in mathematical symbols. So you can, you can add plus, minus, divide, you know, multiply in this box. So it automatically adjusts it. Now I'm going to do a construction line over here. And I'm just going to add in all my construction lines before dimensioning them to save time. 
Uh, and this one's not going to be construction. This one's going to be regular. Okay. Uh, and I want my base to be the same diameter as my top. So I'm going to take both of these points and give it a vertical relation. So that way, if I adjust this top dimension, it automatically adjusts the bottom. All right. Now I'm going to give the dimension of the, the ring, which is 40 millimeters in diameter. But once again, I need to divide this by 2. And I can make this a relation as well. So these two are... Oh, vertical to each other and you know this is also vertical so there we go so uh, one handy little tip that I'm gonna show you real quick if if you have a construction line in the middle so let me just make this construction and I want to dimension one of these I it only works if it's a construction line, but I can actually dimension a diameter versus a radius by dragging it, dragging the number over. So that's a little extra tip for you. So sometimes what I like to do is I like to create one long construction line and dimension it like this, and then go back in and add in my non-construction lines um, so that I can revolve it. Next thing we're going to do is create a vertical line from the top down. We're going to do that here as well. And you know these relations are getting kind of annoying, so I'm going to hide those by going into my show hide menu and clicking the relation. Okay. Now I'm going to create a spline from those two lines that I created and make the spline arrows here. I'm going to make that vertical and then this one is vertical as well. So that way it's tangent to these vertical lines. So that way when I revolve it I'm going to get a nice smooth surface here and there's not going to be a weird transition. Same thing with down here. I'm going to leave the bottom uh, arrow alone or the, um, the handle alone, but I'm going to adjust. Actually, you know what? I believe this is actually a straight line now that I'm thinking back to it. You know what, but let's just do it this way. So I'm going to make this a vertical as well, but I'm just going to drag my arrow. So it was down here. I'm just going to drag it up a little bit so it's a bit more of a, you know, diagonal shape. Okay. So I don't, I don't need to dimension my arrows right now. I could give it like a number, but I want to leave it as is because I can go always go back and adjust things slightly if I don't like the look of it. Um, I do like to eventually go in and, and dimension these if I'm actually creating a product for manufacturing because, you know, if I'm working on something and I send it out to the factory um, and, you know, it gets made and then I go back in on the file, the master file, and I start accidentally adjusting something, it's really hard to get it back to where it was before. So unless you have a backup file, obviously. So I like to... In, especially when I'm making more of a final design, I like to go in here and dimension all of my spline arrows. All right, so now we can go into our features tab and you'll see that I already highlighted my center line here and we can click the revolve boss base tool and hit okay. All right. So, the next thing I need to do here is um, I need to create um, 
the, the, basically the middle profile of the texture. So in my top plane, I'm going to create a polygon. But instead of just doing, you know, a four sided or five sided or six sided polygon, I'm going to go into this parameter and change that number to 30. And click, uh, oh, and then I can click on the origin and then drag it out. And I want my, I actually want my uh, middle point to be in the front. So you'll see here I have a flat vertical line and then my point is facing the Z, the Z axis here. All right. Now, I need to constrain this so it doesn't move around. So I'm going to select the uh, point here and the origin, and then add a vertical relation to it. Now it can't drag left or right. It can only get larger or smaller. Then what I need to do is click on this, const uh, this circle construction line. Oh, actually, the first thing, I'm sorry. First thing I need to do is use a tool, uh, well, to, to snap this to that body, I need to create a profile sketch of where, um, uh, of, this, of the diameter of this specific point of this body. Um, and to do that, this is actually a really helpful tool. I use it quite a bit. Um, if you go under the Convert Entities uh, tool, click the drop-down arrow and choose Intersection Curve. What that's going to do is it's going to create a, um, a sketch from where the perimeter of the, an object or a perimeter of a face that you have selected is intersecting with the plane of your sketch. So imagine I'm just, it's just like taking a knife and cutting along that plane. And then whatever profile is left, that's the sketch I get. So I'm going to turn this into a construction as well, because I don't. I'm only using it as a reference. And I'm going to select the circle that was created with the polygon, and then this new circle that I created, and hit uh, corral uh, deal. All right. Now it's locked in place. It's good to go. I can exit the sketch. All right. Um, now the next thing I need to do is create a curve or a split line, in this case, for the um, the texture for the texture that I'm going to be patterning. So to do that, I need to create a sketch on the front plane. And there's a couple ways to do this. You can use a spline to draw this. Uh, or what I found works pretty well is a, just a, a straight line. Because if you apply a straight line curve to a curved body, um, you get a nice looking effect. You'll see what I mean. So now that I've created this line that bridges from the top edge here to the bottom edge here, I need to select the line and the origin and choose midpoint. All right. Now I can adjust this however, like, however drastic, uh, drastically angled I want my texture. I can, you know, adjust this, but for now I'm going to give it a dimension from here to there of five millimeters. Okay. Now what I need to do is turn this line into a split on this surface. So I'm using the split split line tool. Um, the type of split I want is a projection. 
I want this sketch, the current sketch I'm in, to project onto this face. But I don't want it to project in both directions. I only want it to, direct in, uh, to project in one. So I'm going to choose single direction. And then an arrow pops up here on the origin. And I'm going to choose reverse direction. Click OK. Now it's not quite, the line's not really showing up from my computer, but yeah, it's okay. It's there. Now what I can do is pattern this split line feature around this surface. Um, I can either do it uh, 30 times since that's how many polygon edges are here. Or I can just do it one time, but at a, in a, a degree measurement of 360 degrees divided by 30, which all I'm going to do in this situation. So uh, 360 divided by 30 is 12. So let's go ahead and, and um, we're going to be using our linear, linear pattern, I'm sorry, circular pattern, which is under the linear pattern tool. For my parameter, I need to grab a, a circle, or I think you can also use a, um, a what is it called, like an axis line. But since we already have a circle modeled, we can use that as an edge. And then we're going to do change the the angle or the total angle to 12 and then uncheck equal spacing um, for the features we're going to select our split line and now you can see that it's going to be patterning this into the right direction now we can go either to the right or the left it doesn't matter but uh, now we can hit, hit OK. OK. So. Oh, I just realized something. All right, actually, now, <laughs> pardon me, I'm going to have to go back and edit something, which you know happens quite a bit. But you'll see that my split line does not intersect with this point here. So what I really should have been doing is when I, I need to go back to the sketch and edit it, which is fine. So let's go open up our split line tool. Oh no, I'm sorry, the sketch number two. Let's go ahead and edit that. And I need to delete the relation that I had which was uh, the cordial. And I need this point to be coincident to the, the uh, circle that was an intersecting circle. So there. Now those, those, uh, those uh, curves that I just, the split lines that I just created will be touching these two points, which we want. All right. So next thing we want to do is um, what's called a, we're going to be, well, actually, you may not have the surface tool menu on your little tabs here. To access that, you need to right click on these, uh, on the tabs themselves. And make sure that surfaces are checked. All right, and now they pop up. So, the next thing we need to do is create a lofted surface. And we're going to select this edge here, the edge of our polygon that we created. Oh. And see it's selecting the entire sketch. So let's delete that. We don't want that. We only want one of these selected. So 
we need to right click. I like to right click in the box here because uh, sometimes it doesn't work well if you click outside of it, but we're going right, to right click in here and, and choose selection manager. And then we can click on one, uh, you know, one part of the sketch and not the whole thing using this little, um, in this little menu here, you'll see the three arrows. That's what we need. And then we're going to select this edge. Now, right now it's pretty, it's not working the way we want it to because it's all twisted. So we need to make sure these little green circles here are all on the same side, or at least on the side that we want them to be. And now lastly, we're, we're gonna wanna add some guide curves. To do that, we're gonna select the two split lines that we created. Okay. Now in this situation, I don't need to use any um, start or end constraints. Because I have a pretty, I mean, I have, it's a pretty simple shape and I have guide curves that go along the entire path really. So I don't necessarily need to add anything here, but in certain situations you would want to, but I think actually in, in this specific situation, if I did, it would actually cause it to look bad. If I use a tangency to face, yeah, you're gonna get some weird stuff. So leave that alone. Now we can click OK. All right. So let's go ahead and hide this surface. And the next thing I want to do is I want to delete the face here because I'm going to replace this with my new textured surface. So we're going to use our delete face tool. For the selections, we're going to choose these two. And then make sure under the options, we just have it on delete and hit okay. Now that solid body that we had is now a surface body. We can go ahead and show the surface that we just created. And now we're, just like what we did for the, the split line, we're going to circular pattern our new surface body. So once again, for the parameter, we can either choose an axis or we can choose a, a circular edge that we want it to ro uh, rotate around. And this time I'm going to choose equal spacing at 360 degrees uh, with 30 increments, just like I did for the polygon. Now we're going to choose bodies because this is a surface body and it's not a feature. And you can you should be able to see if you have your options to show full or partial preview, we should be able to see that's about to look pretty cool. Okay. Now we need to Go in here, uh, go back to the surface tab, and let's knit all these surfaces together. All right. So I just dragged and I, I selected all the surfaces by left clicking and dragging across the, the entire model. And then for the tab, or for the options here, we're going to choose create solid and merge entities. And look at that. No, sometimes when you're creating complex surfaces, you'll see, op, uh, you'll see items pop up in the gap control, which is totally fine. Most of the time it's very, you know, minor little errors, but it will, SolidWorks does a pretty good job of fixing those. And in this model, because it's pretty simple, um, there's not a lot of surfaces going on, then uh, it looks like we're we're good to go. There's no there's no gaps. 
to get a real effect of what this looks like, I'm going to turn off my, uh, my lines and just go to shaded. And then I have a computer with a graphics card that can handle the real view graphics, but a lot of the computers um, do not have this. So I'm just going to turn it off so you can kind of see what I see. Or we can see the same thing. All right. It's looking pretty good. Last thing we want to do to set it up for rendering is we need to split these surfaces. And we need to split this body into... Uh, three parts. So I'm going to turn back on my lines. I'm going to go into my front plan again, make a new sketch. And I can show my revolve sketch here and just create lines off of the lines that I created in that. Sometimes you can just drag it all the way across here. Um, midpoint. And midpoint. I like creating relations off of sketches over, um, over a surface or a body when I can. It, it just seems to help the computer run a little bit faster. Um, you'll see here, like, I had to zoom in because my point was snapped to this edge and not the sketch. So make sure if this split command isn't working that your sketches are, or that your split sketch is not, you know, it's, it's got to go across the entire width of the body. Okay. So let's go ahead into our features and we're going to use the split tool. If it doesn't, sometimes I might have uh, tools on my menu bar here that you don't have. If that's the case, um, you can always go up to the insert features and you can find those tools under, you know, whichever menu that I'm in. So I'm going to use split. Let's cut this body into four parts. I'm sorry. Nope. I did not want to do that. I'm going to cut it into three parts. So I just realized, <laughs> one, I just realized I do not need this top sketch. But you know what? It's there, so uh, it's okay. We still have, as long as when you're using your split tool, you are only selecting the, the bodies you want to split, um, you should be fine. So. All right, looks like I have my upper body, my lower body, and the body ring here. Let's go ahead and color these separately so that it's easier when we want to take it into key shot. All right, so I'm gonna go into, a right, I right clicked on the body under appearances, body. I'm going to give it a aluminum matte finish. And because I want the top and the bottom to be the same, I can click on both of those and hit OK. And then the ring is going to do the same thing, but give it a different material. Let's give it like a painted white no nope, plus let's go plastic middle gloss medium gloss white okay all right now i should have done this at the beginning uh <laughs> it's funny in my tutorials i always wait to the end but let's go ahead and save these so let's go pepper Let's see, salt and pepper grinder. And you guys are going to all, all give it, um, you know, follow the naming 
the, the naming procedure that I've uploaded to the web, uh, to Canvas. But I'm just going to put D. Allen. All right. Save. Now, if you want to, in your model, you can always duplicate this body if you want to have a salt and pepper shaker, uh, grinder. To do that, I have a direct editing tab here. If you don't have that open, you can uh, add it by right clicking on the, the menu, uh, the tabs over here and hitting direct editing. And I'm going to use the move body, move copy bodies tool. I'm going to select all of my bodies here. I'm going to copy them. Make sure the copy is checked. Drag it over. Hit OK. And I might go ahead and give these aluminum, matte aluminum, but I'm going to make them dark. So you can, any material in your appearances, uh, material appearances here, you can always change the color uh, if you don't like the color that it's default um, over on the left menu. And then on for the ring, I give that medium gloss black plastic. All right. So there you have it. Salt and pepper shakers. Um, I'm not going to go into any more detail into like the, you know, adding a cap and all that jazz because really what I want you to take away from this tutorial is how to add texturing. And um, if you want to also creating a diminishing bone line. So you can apply that in many areas. You know, it doesn't have to be on a cylinder. You can do it on a flat plane as well, um, which we might get into it in, a, in another tutorial. All right, guys. Thanks for watching and I, I'll see you on the next one.